So a long time ago when I was in middle school, I found out about a certain dinosaur book that has long since been stuck in the back of my mind. One that I remember reading about briefly and expressing some interest in, yet not enough to actually try and get my hands on it. And ever since then, this book randomly comes back to mind every now and again, and every time I think about it, I tell myself that I should just get it and read it. But I would always end up forgetting. And after years and years of this, I would remember it again, but this time I would finally order it, and I would finally get my hands on a copy of the graphic novel novel simply titled Dinosaurs vs. Aliens. This was something that I remember hearing about and did a slight bit of research on when I was younger, however I never really got a chance to read this graphic novel until now. And I have to say, I definitely regret not getting this sooner, because I very much enjoyed this book a lot more than I thought I would. So much so that I wanted to make this video on it because it's not something that has really been covered yet. And I want to share this story for those of you that haven't heard about it yet because in my opinion, this is one of the better stories that expresses the themes of survival in a way that truly feels natural and realistic. And it's weird saying that for a story that has a lot of unrealistic and unnatural aspects to it, but we'll get to that stuff in a bit. And it's not one that really holds anything back. The story can get pretty brutal and even thought-provoking at times. Despite the fact that it looks like a simple story about dinosaurs having an all-out battle with aliens. And trust me, it's not like that at all. There's a lot more to this story, and you'll see what I mean here in a second, but before we get started, as always, I want to provide some background so we know how and why this piece of media was created. Dinosaurs vs. Aliens was created by Barry Sonnenfield and Grant Morrison. For those of you that may not know who these guys are, Sonnenfield is an American filmmaker who's directed quite a few movies but is probably best known for the Men in Black trilogy. Morrison is a Scottish comic book writer who's done tons of work for DC Comics making things like Batman, Animal Man, Doom Patrol, and many other things. He also has some of his own original comics as well. The two collaborated to create something that wasn't supposed to be a completely mindless, brutal comic, but rather a story that delved into the themes of extinction, war, and survival, while having a healthy dose of science fiction elements. The story was going to revolve around what they described as a war that had never been recorded in history, an alien invasion that took place during the age of the dinosaurs. The two creators teamed up with Liquid Comics, an Indian comic book publishing company, to create and publish Dinosaurs vs. Aliens, to which the graphic novel itself would release on July 10th of 2012, with a motion comic of it releasing shortly after on July 23rd. The motion comic was set to exclusively premiere on Yahoo Screen, a now defunct video hosting service. However, you are able to find the full motion comic on YouTube from an unofficial channel, although the quality is pretty bad with some of these parts, which definitely brings down the viewing experience. However, it's nice to see that they've been archived. Along with that, the book would also be available through more digital outlets like ebooks, along with the inclusion of an interactive book as well. But the most exciting thing that was going to come from this project was the movie adaptation of Dinosaurs vs. Aliens. And it wasn't going to be just one film either. There were plans to create a whole trilogy based around this story that was supposed to be more than just another by-the-numbers Hollywood movie. Through this adaptation, they wanted to further commentate on the ideas of indigenous revolt and genocide and explore these darker themes in a more serious light. And these themes are clearly shown in the first volume, which you'll soon come to find out that this is as far as the project actually went. Despite how ambitious it was, nothing else really got off the ground for it. In terms of why that may be, we'll get into later. For now, I want to go through the story that's available to us right now. So without further ado, let's get into Dinosaurs vs. Aliens. The story is divided into three chapters, with chapter one being called Arrival. It starts off focused on a dead alien in a desolate, barren environment that's being searched for by large machines that I assume are powered by more aliens. They refer to this dead alien as Commander Kit, who is actually the narrator of the story. As we segue to the past, Kit explains why they invaded Earth, and it wasn't for malicious reasons. The aliens had been traveling in space for what he said was five generations, which I'm not sure how long that's supposed to be in alien in years, but it's clearly trying to emphasize that it's been a very long time. Anyways, he explains that because they've been in space for so long, their population has been slowly decreasing due to starvation and sickness. And along with that, parts of their ship stopped working, so they were in a pretty bad situation. 
By the time they managed to get to Earth, or as they call it, the Blue Planet, they had run out of fuel and couldn't turn back even if they wanted to. So they had no choice. And by the way, the whole narration that Kit is giving throughout the story is supposed to be a recording that he describes as both a confession and a warning. And during this recording, he also said that whatever resulted from them invading Earth was something that they were convinced they had to do for their survival and had no other choice. However, Kit makes it pretty clear that just because they did that, it doesn't make what they did any better. The next part shows us the dinosaurs, which I think is implied that they are supposed to be the protagonists of the story, and when you take everything into consideration, how they're just minding their own business and suddenly aliens come out of nowhere and invade the planet, yeah, I can see why they'd be called the protagonists of the story. However, like I mentioned before, the reason for the aliens' invasion isn't necessarily for anything malicious. The aliens have their reasons, but it's definitely not good in the dinosaurs' favor. We'll get to why in a bit, but going back to the dinosaurs, the way they're depicted in this story is definitely interesting and very unique compared to everything else I've seen with them. As you can see, the dinosaurs have headwear and armor on them that almost makes them seem like a tribal group. Like I said earlier, this story is essentially an allegory of the atrocities that have resulted from people invading and taking over inhabited land. The explanation that's given for the dinosaurs wearing these helmets and pieces of armor is that in this story, they're depicted as much smarter creatures than we as humans first thought. And this is expressed far beyond just their tribal-like attire. Different carnivorous species are not only able to coexist with each other, but are also able to form a clan and communicate as well. And speaking of communicating, there's no dialogue from the dinosaurs in this story. They communicate with each other through a system of gestures, grunts, roars, and so on. In this part of the story, there's a clan of dinosaurs in armor and gear that I think is literally just called the clan, and they seem to coexist and even work with the raptor pack. The main part of the pack seems to be made up of these much larger theropods which consist of I think a giganotosaurus, a spinosaurus, and the other two I have no idea what they're supposed to be. They almost look like tyrannosaurs, however they have more than two finger claws, so I don't think that's what they are, but maybe I'm wrong, who knows, they could be depicted as tyrannosaurs in the story because let's be honest, it doesn't seem like it's really going for an accurate look anyways. Whatever they may be, one of them is wearing a really cool Triceratops headwear helmet thing, implying that it's the main pack leader. Continuing the story, a lone Tyrannosaur by the name of One-Eye, due to him literally having just one eye, seems to have made their way on the clan's territory and killed a raptor. This angers the clan and they charge at One-Eye, to which he ends up killing one of the members by biting a chunk out of their neck, causing it to stumble off the bridge they're fighting on and into the water. One-Eye then scoops up the dead raptor in his mouth and takes it away from the area, to which we see him take it to his family. And this pretty much shows that even though One-Eye sounds like a villain and is almost set up like one in the beginning there, or at least I thought he was, he's actually just like every other dinosaur out there and is just doing what he can to survive and feed his offspring. Regardless of what his intentions were, the clan followed One-Eye to his home and as they're about to fight, a herd of dinosaurs run past all of them, who are clearly startled by the thing in the sky, which is the alien ship that's come to invade Earth. Real quick, just because I caught myself making a little mistake, chapter 1 is actually called Dominion, while chapter 2 is called Arrival. And the reason why I mentioned that is because that last event actually leads us into chapter 2, which again is called Arrival, where the alien invasion officially begins, and we see the dinosaurs' first reaction to it. The aliens that are released from the ship actually seem to be flying robot alien things, as when you see the dinosaurs biting onto them, they release an electrical discharge of some kind, I think. I don't, I don't really know. Regardless of what they are, the dinosaurs' first reaction is to defend themselves. One-Eye tries to defend his own pack by fighting with the flying aliens, but at the same time is trying to avoid being crushed by the stampede of dinosaurs. He's then pushed into a river with some of the aliens and is washed away from his offspring. This actually ends chapter 2 and we go into chapter 3 which is called War. This chapter dives a little deeper into the aliens reasoning behind their invasion which like I mentioned earlier is a somewhat reasonable motive, however there are issues with it that may question their morals. It starts off with the aliens scanning the area that the clan is roaming in, clearly trying to search for something. 
and they do manage to find something that intrigues them enough which seems to be a little prehistoric rodent. Then the clan comes out of nowhere and tries to attack the aliens, only for the leader to immediately get shot and killed by them. As the rest of the dinosaurs charge, the aliens continue to fight back, killing more and more of them. We then transition to the mothership where we get more information about what the aliens were looking for before they were attacked by the dinosaurs. And this finally explains why the aliens invaded Earth. These aliens are a dying colony, and I think at one point they even said that they only have around 25,000 left in their population. They're searching for certain wildlife that are able to be viable gene carriers so that the aliens can use that wildlife to incubate their young in, so that their colony can grow back to a healthy population. And they would eventually find this viable gene carrier in the form of a prehistoric rodent, and given their reaction in finding this out, it indicates that they have been searching for this for a very long time with constantly failed results. But now that they have it, they can save themselves from extinction, however there is a problem. The mammals aren't able to survive long enough for their young to incubate the way they want them to in a world that's dominated by large predatory dinosaurs that make up the top of the food chain. Now, you could probably tell where this is going, and it's essentially trying to imply here that in order for their species to continue, the aliens may have to wipe out the dinosaurs. This is where the moral dilemma comes in for the aliens, at least between our main character alien, Kit, and another alien character by the name of Shell. The two go back and forth on whether or not this is a right choice to wipe out an entire ecosystem for their own survival, with Kit saying that it is necessary and that they're just a bunch of dumb lizards and they should just continue their plans in wiping them all out. But Shell is on the opposing side and mentions how they're a lot smarter than they were assuming them to be, and that they would just be exterminating an unknown species and there would be consequences in doing so. It's clear that at this point in the story, Kit has completely underestimated these dinosaurs. He thinks they are nothing more than emotionless, dumb creatures that are driven by pure instincts. But again, in this universe, the dinosaurs are much smarter than dinosaurs portrayed in other pieces of media, and this is evident with the final part of this book. One Eye finally returns to his home where he finds that his family have been brutally killed by what I'm assuming were the aliens. As he turns to walk away, one of his young, who managed to get away and is still alive, comes out of the shadows and reunites with his father. I really like this part because while all of this is happening, Kit is in the background narrating how these creatures have no sense of loyalty, loss, or love, but his words are being contradicted with what's being shown to us. Because One Eye returns to his home and his family and is clearly upset by their fate, but seem to show some level of content when seeing that one of his offspring managed to survive. And finally, to end off the strip, One Eye lets out a final loud roar that Kid described as a declaration of war. And that was the story of Dinosaurs vs. Aliens. And honestly, I really liked it. But like most dinosaur media, people had some pretty mixed opinions about it online when it first came out. As some of them thought it was a lazy, unoriginal, and or ridiculous story. And not even ridiculous for the fact that it was centered around dinosaurs fighting aliens, but because of how the dinosaurs themselves were portrayed in the story. People didn't seem too happy of having to suspend their imagination to the point of accepting that dinosaurs in this story were almost tribal-like and wore helmets, armor, and even had decorative tattoos. Dinosaurs fighting aliens? All good. Dinosaurs in tribal wear? Get that shit out of here. It makes me wonder if people understood the point of the story in the sense that it was supposed to be a representation of something in our real world. But maybe people didn't like that idea being incorporated in a dinosaur graphic novel. Along with all of that, another common criticism I saw was how the story felt unfinished and way too short. And yeah, the book is definitely short, but there are multiple indications that point that there was supposed to be some sort of continuation. Unfortunately, it seems that the original creators have just completely abandoned the project as I literally cannot find anything on the topic. All of the sites and sources I've come across talking about this novel have pretty much all said the same thing, and that is that it doesn't seem like any confirmed progress of this story or its movie adaptation have been mentioned past 2012. And seeing how it's been nearly a decade since this story was released, I think it's safe to say that nothing is going to happen for Dinosaurs vs. Aliens anytime soon, and it may stay dormant for a very, very long time. Was it the response from the audience? Did the creators just lose hope in their project? Were they not able to get the movie off the ground and that in turn affected the continuation of the graphic novel? I guess we'll never really know, but what do you guys think?
So, as a person who loves to look at different depictions of dinosaurs in different media and is completely open to hearing out and seeing these ideas expressed through various works, I have to say, this was a real treat for me. I know that a lot of people didn't seem to care for how the dinosaurs were portrayed in this story and it was a very different and very bold approach to go with, but I am willing to be more imaginative towards something like this for the sake of the message that it's trying to send to the reader. I know there could have been better ways of going about this, but I think the creators also just wanted something that was a little more on the nose of what they were trying to say. Of course, I feel like the message could have been just as clear without the inclusion of tribal gear and tattoos for the dinosaurs, but at least it resulted in some really great art, which is no doubt the best part of this graphic novel. The dinosaurs look realistic, the environments are beautiful, and the color choices were very fitting for the scenarios that played out. Overall, I'd say this was a pretty decent book. While it's sad that we never really got a chance to see any of the planned projects come to fruition, we can at least be happy that we have something that managed to see the light of day and enjoy it for what it offers. Thank you all so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already because I'm almost at 20,000 subscribers and chances are if you clicked on this video then you probably like other dinosaur related content which is what my channel is full of. So if you sub then hey more of that kind of content for you. Anyways thank you all for your support and have a nice day.